Are SMB file servers and clients the most boring possible topic? Yes, but their history is not. The Samba docs are festooned with references to acronyms. Net bias, landman, net buoy sifts, SMB. I cannot say that I'm nostalgic for the days in which these terms trod like the dinosaurs they are, but I have found it helpful to know their history. SMB has become the de facto standard for file serving across most operating systems, mostly due to the popularity of Windows. SMB is largely a Microsoft thing with an earlier history involving IBM. These days, it's probably more correct to refer to an SMB server as a SIFS server, but the terms are largely interchangeable as far as I can tell. I still call it SMB because SIFS just sounds weird. SIFS. Today, if a product describes itself as a network attached storage, that just usually means it's a fancy SMB server. It's pretty much implicit that any NAS will offer its files up via SMB, and the term file server is used more or less interchangeably with SMB server. File sharing protocols like NFS are still used in various settings, but for the most part, in consumer and business contexts, it means SMB. My friends, it was not always thus. In the year of our Lord, 1993, I was a network administrator. I was listening to Allison Chain's Dirt on repeat. The internet as we know it wasn't really a thing. ArcNet and Token Ring were things. Having an Ethernet network was not a given. DHCP wasn't really a thing yet either, so setting up a TCP IP network was a totally manual process. And of course, businesses didn't usually use TCP IP. They instead used protocols that were auto-configuring and didn't require some monkey administrator to give every device its own unique IP address. These auto-configuring protocols worked best, or sometimes only, on a single LAN segment and maybe across a bridge. They supported numbers of stations in the dozens or hundreds. Ain't nobody doing much Googling on that network. Now, Unix was around, but not many businesses used it for file and print sharing. It was tied to TCP IP, it was also expensive. It was mostly used in hippie academic settings, in Wall Street trading offices and movie production houses, but almost never at an insurance company or a doctor's office. The truly big dog for business file sharing at the start of the 1990s was Novell. The nice Mormons from Utah. The halcyon days of the business file server began with Novell's netware product. Now their file and printer sharing features were tied to one of those auto-configuring network protocols. It was named IPX SPX. Now it was stupid easy to configure. You just basically plugged it in. And as long as the thing you were trying to talk to was on the same LAN segment, it worked. I started my networking career with uh, LANtastic and Novell networks. And when it came time for me to have to learn TCP IP, I was incredibly intimidated. The fuck is a subnet mask? But setting up a network network wasn't anything like that. It was mostly falling off a log. And after you fell off that log, you'd have your files and your printers shared right to your DOS 5.0 clients. Meanwhile, in not so Mormon Redmond, Microsoft had a history using this IBM related thing named NetBIOS. NetBIOS ran on top of various lower level protocols, including NetWare's IPX. Microsoft's love affair with NetBIOS was tied to a higher level protocol they created named SMB. SMB defined access to file resources. Via a NetBIOS extension protocol named NetBuoy, and with a little squinting, SMB over NetBIOS could work more or less like Novell's file sharing features. Uh, NetBuoy is what you have to thank for network location names like backslash, backslash, server, backslash, share. Developers, 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 developers. Another contemporary file serving product named Artisoft Lantastic also used NetBIOS. But Microsoft products and Lantastic were totally incompatible with each other because Lantastic used its own NetBIOS extensions, not NetBuoy. Starting in the late 80s, uh, Microsoft developed a product kind of in the background named Land Manager. It offered like file and print sharing services via NetBuoy and SMB. It was rebranded and marketed by several vendors, including 3Com. But maybe most notably, it was integrated by IBM into their OS2 product. It wasn't very popular in any of its incantations. Microsoft wasn't directly a major player itself in the file sharing market until the early 1990s. They licensed Land Manager to other companies and sort of half-heartedly sold it directly to some customers. They kind of still thought the computer was personal. But after their involvement with OS2 had gone to you, Microsoft got serious about selling file and print sharing services directly to businesses. In the early 90s, they released Windows NT. Windows NT retained compatibility with NetBuoy so that the two existing OS2 computers and the four existing MS-DOS LAN manager clients could connect to it. Into the 90s, Windows NT got popular on the server and DOS and Windows 3 and 95 continued to dominate on the client. Microsoft fucked over Novell by making it hard for Windows clients to connect to network servers and for network clients to connect to Windows NT servers. This was a pretty epic battle at the time. Many innocent network administrators died from exhaustion long hold to Microsoft and Novell tech support. All the third-party contenders like Artisoft Lantastic were brutally murdered while they slept. After laying waste to the competition and feasting on their corpses, at the advent of the internet, Microsoft continued to extend that bias. 
so it worked pretty well over TCP IP. They also worked to make IP networks easier to set up by putting resources into DHCP. IPX and NetBuoy went the way of the appendix, but SMB and NetBIOS stuck around atop TCP IP as SIFS. As the internet developed, Unix servers became more common. These machines needed to consume and supply SMB file services, so Samba was born. It is a SIFS server. The Samba developers consulted what meager docs existed for the SMB and NetBIOS and NetBuoy protocols. They reverse engineered the rest in order to make the server actually work in real world for real clients. For their troubles, they were largely treated as a hostile camp by Microsoft. In the end, there's no amount of Steve Bomber shit they could throw at open source to kill it. These days, there's just no money in the local file sharing market, so no more battles need be fought. Samba just works, it's on your NAS, it's the file server. It will likely always be thus as the entire concept of needing to share files locally rather than via the cloud uh, fades into memory. The term file server is in the same class of the current generation as what the term time sharing was to mine. It's a quaint retro throwback. File server is still useful, not for very long. Thanks a lot for listening.